So let's talk about write-offs and um, that, that subject. We've recorded all of our time, we've told the truth. Yeah. We've got rid of some of the bad clients, we've set expectations and educated the good clients. How, what do we, how do we deal with write-offs um, and what do we do and why do they occur and what should we be doing now? Well, in my humble opinion, the most common reason for write-offs is that we let the job run and no one really gets a grip of it mm -hmm. until it's too late. Mm -hmm. And so that phrase, the 30% budget rule, is one of the most... Stop and go. Stop and go, that's it. It's the crucial one because most jobs just keep shooting over and no one's supervising mm -hmm. the overruns. And then we've all been there, but in my estimation it's 70-80% of write-offs. When I used to do um, accounts and, and, and audits, my worst nightmare was to pick up a job and open the work in progress to find that there's X hundreds or X uh. thousands of pounds already on that job before I even got to look at it <laughs> and that I'm halfway into my budget. And I think that comes down to perhaps, Gordon, um, some firms need to bill more often. And do. Bill monthly and event billing. I think the frequency of billing will help. That also helps the payment, by the way, because the small, smaller pills are mm -hmm. easier to swallow. It also allows clients to better relate the work that they can see to the invoice that they receive. Mm -hmm. So in the old days where you sent a bill for the annual work, once a year, once a year, and then of course there'd be a bit of oh well, let's do this, that, and the other afterwards, and carry that forward to next year. Yes. Nowadays you can't. It get doesn't that work way. in this climate, does no, it? You absolutely. cannot do that these days. On, absolutely on top of your wit. Um, so two or three things. First of all, thirty percent budget rule. Second one was one of your ideas, the post-it note, mm -hmm. where you sit down. Unlike most of us, um, certainly of our age, experience where the manager would say, "Get last year's file, open up a new Follow file." Up and we'll see if you've got any problems, you have to supervise them and say, last year we did all of these schedules which were just not necessary. Now particularly now where we're not, we're doing accounts rules, account, reporting accountants, not auditing. So the, the, I think the thing says, the accountant's report says something like, we take no... That's it. No, um, so why is all the analysis necessary? Exactly. So we either get the client to do the tax analysis or we get the client to pay us to do it quite separately. If you wanted to knock out a set of accounts, I was with a firm just last week and they reckon they can turn out a set of accounts for £700 without really too much fuss. And yet, they get to 3000 Yeah. And they all agreed that nobody sits down at the beginning of the year and says, what do we not do this year? Which is just surplus to requirements. Just I put a post-it note in last year's file against all the schedules you don't need and staple on the inside cover of this year's file a list of all those schedules that are not required. Bulls Under up. the threat of severe pain, do not do this work again. That's it. Otherwise, how do they know? They don't. And you've got to do that at the start of the job, really, every job, because if you do points forward, you don't really look at it before you no. start. You just jump in, don't you, some people? I'm do. afraid we do. So good, proper planning saying, is this analysis really necessary at the start of a job, helps it to some extent to making sure you're, you're, you're on the bone in terms of work. Well, it helps a lot. I mean, it really does nail it. One of the big, big, big things I've seen recently is um, the 15-minute review at the end of a job because most money on jobs um, is lost at the end. The file is done by the senior who then passes on to a manager or partner who then sits on it for a couple of days, they review it in the absence of the senior, the file then gets passed back to the senior and then back to the partner and ping pong ensues between the, yeah. the two files. So one of the, one of the firms that I've been working with have gone to a 15 minute review. That is, a senior books a date, a 15 minute a a slot in the partner or the manager's diary, and they sit together and review the file. The senior flicks over the, the pages and said, this is what I've done, this is how it is. And the manager goes, that's fine, that's fine, we need to do this, tidy that up. And they make it happen in 15 minutes flat. So it's a fast review. Then the senior goes away, tidies it up, and then it comes back as a complete file for the partner. Right. Two-step review process only. And that does actually um, finish and close down. I mean, one of the things that you've been working with on a firm I know recently is to get the job as closed down as quickly as possible, because the quicker you close it, the faster yep. you can build. Well, we refer to it as turnaround time. And what we found was, for example, that a job, I think it was 65 days, and, and many of us listening to this or watching would say 65 days, that is a, so slow. Mm -hmm. What we then said was let's knock 10 days off turnaround time, that's the target. And it was once they focused on it, it was just so simple. 
because if you can get everyone to say, right, our job is to get the jobs done 10 days quicker than 10 last year. 10 days quicker than last year. Which means, therefore, you've got to ring the client up, agree the time scales, which means you've got to fill your timesheet in on time, every time, tell the truth. And if you start slipping your budget, you've got to tell me now. Because all of those things make for efficiencies. So gone are the days where your work in progress is effectively your second bank account. Yes. It's just, it's yeah. just not the way it is anymore. It's, it's, it's really a mechanism of getting jobs managed, done, and out the door, billed, and collected, obviously. So getting the job turned around, finished, closed Crucial. down, absolutely important um, these days. Um, what about debtor management? So we build the clients. We've been a bit more efficient than we were last year. We're not re doing the same analysis. We've done a 15-minute review. We've done the post-its and all that stuff. What happens with um, debtors? We've sent a bill out, and we haven't been paid. Well, if the clients are refusing to pay, increasingly we are now having to take a much more commercial view. Uh, and again, I'm very sensitive to one of the major differences, shall we say, between a firm of solicitors and a firm of accountants. Solicitors are tending to do transactional work. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in their blood, their commercial blood, they will, the whole relationship is based on that transaction. So, for instance, if someone comes along with a divorce, you know, they will invoice whatever's on the clock without really appearing to care too much because they know the client's not coming back. In our blood, in our commercial blood as accountants, we expect almost all of our clients to come back for the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a result, we have been very soft on debt collection. Mm -hmm. We're you know, almost very British and too polite to ask. Way in, too in polite. That sort of term. But we can't afford ourselves that luxury now. Mm -hmm. We could in years gone by, but now I think we've had So what are we seeing out. in terms of um, firms doing to collect their cash quicker? Right. Well, the first thing is we're looking at the old system and saying, does that work? Answer, no. No. So the old system is send out statements. Mm -hmm. Statements don't work. Say, well, let me rephrase that. Statements work for maybe 5% of clients who say, oh, yes, that reminds me. And they get their checkbook out and they send their check to the accountant. Most of us take a statement and put it straight in the bin. Mm -hmm. So we're now suggesting, well, don't send a statement, send a letter. It's got all the same information on it. You may all merge it in, you know, dear Mr. Fletch or dear Ian, we sent you a bill 25 days mm -hmm. ago in line with our terms and conditions. We're looking forward to receiving the check. This would be a great time to tell us if there's a problem. Mm -hmm. that, so the first letter's got to say, is there a problem? Is there a problem? You've got to flag it up. Um, and I can reference you, by the way, or those listening to the 2020 member CD, it's called the Debtor's Letters, mm -hmm. and there's four of them, and we're suggesting day 25, after the invoice goes out, letter number one, day 35 is letter number two, which is firm but fair, along mm -hmm. the lines of, I haven't heard from you since my last letter, I take it there's no problem, I'm sure it's an oversight, let's have the money. Day 45 is a bit more stroppy. It says, you know, very disappointed, beginning to take it personally. What have I done wrong? We're going to have to consider our relationship if you don't choose to pay. Day 55, you now on stop. Very firm. And some firms, have, instead of taking the 55 days, are now squeezing that down into 35 days, aren't they? They are indeed. Um, and there is an element of, if you're firm with clients, they mm -hmm. tend to respect you more. Mm -hmm. And we've got endless stories, and I'm sure the listeners do, that if you stand up to a client and say this is unacceptable, mm -hmm. they begin to respect you so much yeah. more and value, therefore, your commercial advice. What about using the phone? Have you seen Absolutely. more of that? Absolutely. We want more of that. I mean, I think managers and if partners have the time, ideally they should find the time, but certainly someone should pick up the phone who has the relationship and say, is there a problem? Can I come out and collect the money? I'm stopping by or I'm passing by your door and... Can we have a chat about it? Just anything to get the personal touch. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen more and more phone, people making the phone call now, partners, people responsible for the bill, to, ringing up seven days after the invoice has gone in, saying, "Did you receive it? Is there any, are you okay with it? Are you comfortable? Uh, can you know? Can we have the money?" Um, another thought there, Ian, is, is to incentivise people to do this because sometimes mm. it's people shy away from that sort of phone call, and we all understand why. But if you incentivize people and say, for example, I were a fee-earning manager with a portfolio of, shall we say, 70, 80,000 pounds, if I can get my debtor's days down by 10 days, I can get a bonus. Mm -hmm. So it's in my interest to make the phone, to call, make the phone call and get the money in. Um, and when you do your sums as a firm, 
and arbitrarily say we're doing a million turnover, shall we say two months is locked up in mm -hmm. debtors, if you can get that down by 10 days, mm -hmm. you know, that's quite a bit of money. So you can afford the to pay bonuses. It's a good return, actually.